we share worship today with two congregations. Although we are separated out of necessity, we are united by our faith. And this space, though virtual, is sacred because God is with us. I invite you to take a moment to still your minds and open your hearts as we enter worship on this Good Friday. Wherever we are gathered for this worship today, we acknowledge the traditional territories and the sacred lands that we gather on. Here in Paris, Ontario, we are gathered on the traditional and sacred territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Neutral Peoples. In Sutton, Ontario, you gather on the traditional lands of the Chippewas of Georgina. Wherever you may be this day, I invite you to acknowledge the land that you were gathered on and give thanks for our Native brothers and sisters and their stewardship of the land throughout the ages and the work that we do together in the year 2020 towards right relationship. Let us pray. God, as we gather in this sacred space, made possible by technology, we are united on our journey through Holy Week. We pray for all people who are struggling because of COVID-19. We pray for the safety of all who are put at risk to care for others and to provide for us. We pray for healing for the sick and comfort for those who are grieving. We pray that you will give us courage and resolve to act in right ways and be a part of caring for others by following the guidance of our leaders. And Holy One, we give thanks that we are free to worship. And we pray for people who profess their faith at great risk of persecution or worse. We give thanks for safe places to shelter. And we pray for all those in need of shelter for themselves. We pray for those who are in need of a safe place to live. We give thanks for all the blessings in our lives, and we pray for the generous hearts that are ours to share our abundance widely. We ask that you would bless our worship and join our prayers with all people in all places who share the grief of Good Friday with the hope of Easter to carry us forth. These things we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Friends, we turn to scripture on this holy day. We share the passion of Jesus as revealed in Matthew's gospel. We share the passion of Jesus as he was handed over to be humiliated, beaten, and crucified. We share a song to carry our thoughts and prayers to God. And we hear the witness of some who were there. Listen to what the gospels might reveal for us today. Tremble, tremble, 
Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who was called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed Jesus over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the people answered loudly, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified! Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. I was there. I don't understand these people. I have questioned Jesus and found nothing about him to be a threat. I expected him to be a warrior, to fight and protest. But he seems resigned to allow himself to be pursued or freed. Whatever the people tell me to do, I offered to let him go, but for some reason, they would rather free the bad man, Barbaras. I don't understand what is happening here, but I washed my hands of the whole thing. If they want to pursue him, so be it. My job is to keep the peace, and if this is what they want, it makes no difference to me. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and they took the reed and they struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him, and they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. I was there. I don't understand what is happening. I saw them abuse a man and beat him horribly. I don't understand what this man they call Jesus has done. I thought he was a subversive and inciting violence against the government, but others said he preached a message of peace and love. Why would this be a threat to others? I was there, but I do not understand what is happening. So
And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. I was there. I had traveled with Jesus. I listened to him teach and preach. I saw him heal sick people and eat dinner with people others would not have anything to do with. He told us to love everyone, no matter who they were or anything about them. Something terrible is happening. What will it all mean? Oh my, it's gotten dark as night in the middle of the day. I can't believe how they abused my teacher. I can't believe he can endure this much more. Jesus, I will try to have courage to love all and tell them that you are a good person and that they shouldn't be frightened of. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, a lie, a lie. Lama sat baktani. That is my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this was God's son. I was there. I know it does not appease to some to say that I was following orders, but what could I have done? I saw this man take so much abuse, and I have and I have to confess I have participated in hurting him, while well, hurt by what I saw and did not stop. And I am sorry for this. Jesus did not fight or protest. In fact, I heard he healed my friend when his ear was cut off. How can people act this way? I was there. I saw what happened. Truly, this man is exactly who they said he was. 
I was there. I am frightened. I will tell others about what is happening in the temple, how dark it got, the rock splitting in two. I will never be the same after what I have witnessed. This is a difficult day. It is hard to see good news in the midst of humiliation, violence, and death. But we know this is not the end of the story. This is not the end of our story. As we wait in the shadow of death, fear and uncertainty that people endured, we prepare ourselves to witness with the women the awesome event of that first Easter day. God be with you, comfort you and carry you. The whole of this weekend is worship. We have just begun. And our worship will conclude with a benediction on Easter morning. Go in peace, go in love. Were you there when they laid him in? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble.